Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. I need to warn you that the video that you're about to watch contains entertaining and educational material. I'm glad we've gotten that out of the way. This will be part one of a two-part series of the installation of the TKO 600 into the Fairmont project. I'm also going to be installing a new steel bell housing as well as a new brace to hold everything into place. Now you might be asking why I'm doing this because I've got a perfectly good T5 transmission that was rebuilt by Paul Cangelosi. Well I reached out to Paul after the dyno run of Dark Matter Pikachu and gave him the numbers that the engine put out which was around 575 horsepower and somewhere around 622 foot-pounds of torque and he said the T5 is probably not going to handle that hence the reason he recommended this. I reached out to Modern Driveline and uh, got all the parts and everything that I just mentioned. So this will be part one of the installation of the TK0600 into a Fox body. It's a lot of fun. Let's get started. Since the engine made as much power as it does, I'm no longer able to use the T5 transmission that Paul Cangiolosi built for me. It's kind of sad, but uh, it may end up in a happy place over in the Mustang at a later date. However, in order to address the issue here with the Fairmont, I have purchased a TKO 600 transmission and some other, well, we'll call them go fast parts that I have over on the bench. I'm intent on installing all these parts in the vehicle today. Now, whether or not this will end up as one video, it's hard to say. I think it's going to be multiple videos, but not knowing that and wanting to get the transmission up into this car, well, I need to get it done. Anyway, let's go over to the bench and see what I have in store. Here I have a table full of parts. Yay! Got all this stuff from Modern Driveline. I'll put links in the description to everything so that you can check the stuff out for yourself uh, and some of the stuff I got from some other companies, but I'll be sure to link everything. Why don't we start at the front? This is a new separator plate. This is specifically designed for racing applications. Uh, in fact, we've, we've crossed over into that realm beyond the street car into like race car parts. Uh, and this bell housing follows that up. This is a steel bell housing instead of aluminum. Reason you'd run something like this is, say for instance, uh, the flywheel forever in, you know, reason came apart or the clutch or something like that. This will help contain that shrapnel, which is a really good thing because, you know, I like my feet the way they are and I don't want them to go away anytime soon. So should there be some catastrophic failure with the flywheel or clutch system, that's what this is designed to do. And this as well. All this stuff comes with its own fasteners that I need to use because all of these fall into compliance uh, with the regulations that are set forth. In fact, I uh, read through the instruction sheet last night just to make sure that everything was on the level where it needed to be. I also have a clutch kit in here which contains the pilot bushing and the clutch and pressure plate and all that stuff in here from QuickTime. New uh, release fork lever to be installed, new transmission mount. The interesting thing is, is the people at Modern Driveline did not recommend that I run the uh, polyurethane transmission mount that I have now because they were afraid that the vibrations may adversely affect the transmission. So they recommended I just go for this one. I'm going to follow the recommendations since that's what they do for a living. These are uh, rings, spacer rings to be used in the bell housing if need be based on the application. So we're going to be test fitting that before this ever goes up into the vehicle because um, there's a couple of different uh, variants uh, with Ford transmissions. Also uh, new flywheel bolts, new uh, pressure plate bolts, um, some assembly lubricant to go along with that. And then of course here is the uh, TKO 600. Now this is rated to handle up to 600 pound feet of torque. I'm at 622 so I'm a shade over. I am a little concerned, but I'm a lot less concerned with this than I was with the T5 because when I talked to Paul Cangiolosi, I asked him about it. I said, you think the T, you know, after I got the dyno numbers, I think, said, do you think the T5 can handle that? And he says, no, it won't. Um, I think he said the T5 was good for up to like 350 horsepower, somewhere in that neighborhood. Anyway, I'll put the specifics in the description since I can't think of that at the moment. The T5 transmission has automatic transmission fluid as its base, so I was running a different fluid before, but now this is recommended that I run this sinker mesh fluid instead in this because this does not use automatic transmission fluid based lubricants. Three quarts should do it. Now I started out, I was going to use a cable style clutch. In fact, I was going to take the one off of the Mustang. I thought about getting uh, a newer version so that I had new parts 
uh, with the clutch set up. So this is everything needed for uh, a cable operated clutch, which was available and I, I could have stayed with this. But the people at Modern Driveline were way cool and he says, hey, make me a video about the installation of a hydraulic clutch setup, which is what I will be doing at some point. I will not cover that in this video. I'm gonna, this will stand on its own, Modern Driveline. There's a plug for you. All this stuff, mounting hardware, hoses, everything else. I may mount this to the transmission today. I may get this far and get this at least mounted to the transmission, but I don't even have my clutch pedals or anything in the car, so putting this in there is just a complete waste of time in my opinion. And last but not least, a new uh, transmission mount brace is going to go in. Uh, this was also something that was recommended to maintain driveline angles, blah, 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 all that stuff. This stuff is all over budget, which is why I'm not nearly as excited. I mean, it's all cool stuff, granted, but all this has put me over budget uh, since the engine made as much power as it did. Not gonna cry about that. Well, maybe whine a little bit, but I'm not gonna cry. Anyway, as you see, we have plenty of work to do, and it's gonna start by removing that T5 from the, the car, but you've seen it going in. I don't think you need a whole lot of detail there. Just know that we're removing the T5 from the Fairmont. One more thing before I forget, this is a shift stop. So in other words, like on the T5 I showed you in that final assembly video where I set this up and it makes it so the shifter can only move so far. Now, both the people at Modern Driveline and when I opened up the uh, sheet and instructions for the uh, TKO 600, both recommend against using this. So I got this to use, but I'm not gonna use it. I've been recommended by people that are professionals that say don't use this, so I'm not gonna use it. Just use a shifter and try not to hang on to it like it's, uh, you know, monkey bars or anything like that. Hmm. Let's hit your head on stuff day. International, hit your head on stuff day. Even if you're short, you get to hit your head on stuff today. We're an equal opportunity bruiser. So this is one of the first things I'll check is to make sure that this mates up to the back of that transmission. Can't hurt. Ah, they have a plug in the back here, rubber plug to where when you insert this, it pushes the plug back in, similar to what Paul was talking about. Since I pulled this out of the back of this, I'll be able to put it in the back of the T5 for storage. And they said it would work. So now I need to get a new end for my drive shaft to run this transmission. This is why we're test fitting. Uh, this brace, when I drop everything down, may very well come into contact with the engine because it's no longer gonna be, gonna be supported back here and I don't want it, the bell housing rusting on this. So I'm just gonna remove it. And this bolt, if you saw the episode where I installed this, uh, the threads were not doing so great. Grateful for that. Before I get too far, the more I look at this, the more I realize that this exhaust is probably gonna be in my way. It's not gonna be that difficult to remove. So I'm just gonna do that now before I got everything jammed up. This is like practice removal. Looks like my plan of roughing up the edges here really worked. So if you're gonna use aluminum tubing, be careful, one, of scratching the surface because it's super easy to do and I pretty much scratch this thing all over the place, but to get the pipes to stick, if you don't have a uh, way of crimping these down, sanding those out like that was very effective. Getting a window into what it's gonna be like to change spark plugs in this car. You can't help it. I mean, when you see a turbo impeller, you're like, I gotta touch that. It's like a thing, a man law.
This sealer is awesome. A little bit of brake clean and it's just gone. I'm feeling the need to get this thing set up for storage. I have this thought in the back of my mind that the Mustang may get its transmission and engine block back. That is if I could find a, a good source for a salvage yard parts for it and uh, reclaim some of the things I'm borrowing for the Fairmont. So it's a matter of necessity at the moment, but the fact that I have a perfectly good, in fact, awesome transmission left over and an engine block uh, could mean that, uh, well, I don't know what it means. I just wanna prepare. Stuff never dries. Well, other than in the absence of air. Oh yeah, there was a little bit of Loctite on these also. I'm gonna go clean these threads up, I'll be back. Just trying to make sure I have the keyways in the correct locations. I didn't set these up correctly last time, and this is what I was talking about that they did not want installed on the TKO 600. They're like, it's just fine. There's gates on the inside. Don't touch it. Fine, I won't touch it. But this one has already been touched, so I'm just gonna set it up. I'm told this is how you properly set it up. Put a business card in between the shifter and the stop. Somehow it got looser. There we go. Done. Trying to see if the shifter that I bought is actually gonna work on this. I'm told it will, but I don't know. Well, I can't use the supplied fasteners. Okay. Well, it does look like the holes line up. Just gonna have to find some larger fasteners, I think, because these just won't go through here. Looks like the holes and everything line up fine. Looks like a wimpy shifter compared to this transmission, but hey, it is what it is. We'll just keep these fasteners to the side. Uh, try to figure out, I'm probably gonna have to enlarge those holes to attach it. The cool thing about this transmission, this shifter, if this is too far back, which I think for my application it is, can actually be moved up to here by just flipping this plate around. I'm gonna be removing this plate before I put it up in the vehicle, and I'll be able to show you that firsthand, but this can be mounted in two locations. So they, they thought ahead in that respect, and I did just a little looking on the internet last night. I also saw people placing shifters up in here. Also, not sure how they managed that. I also saw offset shifters to where you can move this whole shifter over to one side or the other. It doesn't necessarily benefit me in this application, but there's options, lots of options. All right, well, where this thing ends up from here, I don't know, but I'm definitely not letting this go to waste. Let's find a home for it. If you were wondering about this plug, it's never gonna fit. It doubles as a storage unit. Ooh. We'll be together again someday. It's not you, it's me. You get my bell housing back. Ooh, it is on them dowels. <laughs> I just forgot about this one. Oh yeah, that looks better. Ooh, starting to get some rust. That ain't cool, man. That ain't cool at all. And I didn't put the spacer or the block plate on there the last time either, so this is actually a good opportunity to do this. And considering that uh, I'm probably gonna leave all this stuff intact and I'm gonna put the clutch and everything in here now. 
I'm gonna go about this as if it's final assembly. Torque everything to spec, put it all together like it's for reals. I think I got just the thing for that. Looks like they put some what looks like lithium grease on the bolts and they assembled it. This whole assembly was balanced and they spent a lot of time and effort doing that. So I'm just gonna mark the inside here where the flywheel goes on so that it makes, well, future assembly easier. That's all I need. Flywheels wanna kill you, be careful. I mean, they seem innocent, but don't ever trust them because they're not. I've got nasty cuts from flywheels. Oh, got some oil back here. Hope that's not like a rear main seal leak. We're gonna have to look at that a little bit closer. The oil wasn't from a leak. It was actually left over from the dyno run. The caps on the valve cover uh, aren't baffled underneath and as a result, they allowed some oil to come out the valve covers. I'm looking into resolving that issue in a future video. Not so fast, Eric. You still got some things to switch over from the old transmission to the new. Okay, I'll bite. Number one, the Speedo. You can't just leave this rubber plug in there. You have to put something in, else in. But since my speedometer is gonna be GPS and I no longer need to worry about the cable, I took the old cable out of the Mustang, which that speedometer cable was completely wrecked anyway. And I pulled the cable out of the inside of here, filled this up with RTV and created a makeshift plug, if you will, uh, that I'm gonna transfer over. I'm assuming they're the same size as far as the gear goes. Also, this is the neutral safety switch here on the new transmission. If you remember with the old transmission, I had installed this plug in place of the neutral safety switch. I'm going to transfer that over also because I am not running a neutral safety switch just because I'm not. And if you're curious, this is reverse light switch over here on this side. And if you have a digital speedometer, there is the pickup for that. all filled up with RTV. Hoping it doesn't leak. And it fits. That's encouraging. Boop. Just wanna see if it'll go in. Oh, and it will. All right, now it looks like there's already still some sealer in there. So I'm just gonna go with that. Why throw away a perfectly good switch? It won't work in this one, obviously, because remember there's a pin that comes out and makes contact with the original switch. I'm also gonna plug off my Speedo so that that doesn't have any foreign intrusion. I think we've swapped everything over. I can now put this guy away. Yeah, it's really good for your back. All this stuff, according to literature and everything, needs to be SFI approved, including the flywheel. My flywheel does. This was also a 50 ounce flywheel. I had to change this because in order to balance the engine properly, we had to change the flywheel. It's just how it was. Brillo pads, they've been my friends lately. I got rid of the rust for now. I suspect that will come back at some point. I just hope that I get a chance to run this car before that time. If not, it may create like a hard spot on the flywheel, which yeah, it could be a problem. Better, yes. Did all the rust go away? No, but I like this option. It's gentle, yet abrasive. And it's not like I can put like, I don't know, any kind of rust inhibitor on there, really, because it'll make it so the clutch starts to slip, and I don't want that. Along with my box of goodies that contained a transmission, amongst other things, and new fasteners, I also have, finally, some dowels, somewhere around here. Yeah, there they are. Some dowels for the flywheel which we can install now. Uh, all new fasteners for everything, like everything. I believe these may be the fasteners that attach the uh, transmission to the uh, bell housing, which we'll get to in a minute. 
But first, let's install those dowel pins on this flywheel. And there was a whole thing in there, <coughs> in these instructions, about checking run out, <coughs> everything else. All my parts are brand new. If they go together, fine. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm not going to go through this whole complicated setup. If I was trying to match two opposing things up, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not feeling going through the trouble of doing all that stuff. I'm not really worried. Because once again, these are all new parts. The engine's new, the crankshaft's new, this is new, transmission's new, the bell housing's new, it's all new. But if, it, if there's difficulty with it going together, then yeah, I, I will definitely heed that and get right on that stuff. But right now, yeah, yeah, modern driveline. Oh, these were on the outside. How funny. Here I am digging for them inside, and they're outside. That wasn't very helpful. I don't know, my old flywheel, they just sort of shaved them off. Not sure why. And some of you might be thinking, hey, Eric, you put those dowel pins in, it's going to affect the balance. Well, I talked to the machinist about that, and he didn't seem to think it was an issue. Where do these go in? Because if they're supposed to go into here, that's not uh, going to happen. Unless these just slide in and out like this unless they're supposed to be like that because really once the pressure plate is in place these can't go anywhere so i'll show you here's my cool clutch disc by the way so clutch sits in there but once these are lined up yeah once this is tightened down they're not going anywhere i kind of like these pins better because they do the job of alignment, but whenever you need to do any kind of machining, there's no special tools needed to remove them. I'll take that. So I'm just gonna leave those there for now. Clutch alignment tool, a uh, pocket screwdriver, and a peppermint. This is funny because this is like the second transmission I've gotten that had food in it. So I don't know what it is about transmissions and food, but I, you know, it's not that I don't appreciate it, it's just odd that and I'm seeing lots of food to go with transmission stuff. But the real reason I'm in here is because the pilot is inside. There it is right there. There's our pilot. Pilot bushing. What does it do? This is what the nose of the input shaft goes into and it supports the front. The clutch lives on here like this. Uh, I hope I don't have to cut that down. I really hope I don't have to cut this down. So that lives in there. The pilot bushing lives on here. All power being transferred through the clutch to the transmission. Pilot bushing goes here. And by the way, I know I marked this before. That's just to make it easy for me. These are offset. See how these are closer together and these are farther apart. So you can really only put the flywheel on one way. I just did this for my own personal making it easy. I look for the dot, put it together. I'm using a brass on this because I don't want to mess it up. Although, we may have a bushing driver set that could do an even better job. But this is working well. Brass is soft metal, that's why I'm using a plastic hammer and a brass end. Don't want to damage the surface. Seems all right. Next, the block plate. Leave that there for now. This is where I struggle slightly. You'll note when I pulled out the old fasteners out of the uh, crankshaft for the flywheel, they were coated with what appeared to be something like lithium grease. Well, here are new, new flywheel bolts and it comes with uh, an assembly lubricant. Now I'm a little hesitant here because there's still some lubricant down in the bores of the crankshaft right now, as it is. I don't like mixing lubricants. Um, sometimes things happen chemically and can cause bad stuff to happen. And the reason why they're doing this is because they want consistent torque on all the fasteners. Given that the crankshaft is new and it's already got some lubricant in it, I'm not gonna install any of this particular lubricant at this time. Uh, so I'm just gonna run them in. 
Uh, so like I said, I don't want to mix those lubricants. But that being said, I've looked up the torque specs for uh, these. This goes to 85 foot-pounds and then the pressure plate goes to 35 foot-pounds. Also, just looked at some things in the clutch since that's what we're about to install here. Recommend break-in periods. Uh, some information there. Also, we just uh, installed the bushing and there may be a pilot bearing that's installed instead of a bushing. Well, they're talking here like they say that uh, using a pilot bushing is better for high power applications like what we have here and not to put any grease on it. Like normally what I've done is I put a little grease on the input shaft, but I'm not going to do that this time. It's brass bushing. They say not to do it. I'm not going to do it. So that's an important warning. Also, they talk a little bit about the dowels that uh, we just installed. So we're good there. Here's some stuff about the release fork and how to install the uh, throw out bearing and then some things to do and not do uh, with your new clutch. So instructions, stuff to read. If I can find the stuff on the internet, I'll put links in the description, but all this came with my clutch. If you do decide to get one of these, it should come with all this information anyway. Just making you aware that that information is there. Don't ignore it. Let's put this on. Speaking of instructions, this is interesting. I just pulled this out of the fasteners and was looking at the assembly lubricant uh, when I found this. And this says torque them to 75 foot-pounds, which is contrary to what I just looked up. So should I split the difference at 80? Sure. Okay, I looked at this lubricant. It's this darker color. It's not like the stuff that's in there but it's still in the back of my mind. They say to do it, so I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna clean out those threads the best I can before I install these fasteners. And hopefully everybody's happy, just calm yourself. Yeah, I don't know what that was. But it's not coming out so easy. Maybe that's what the pocket screwdriver was for. Let's see. All right. I guess this is what it was for. Yeah, when I looked this up on the internet, they also said install Loctite on these bolts and torque them to 85 foot-pounds. The internet, it's a roll of the dice. Well, the good news is, is once I'm done with this, this clutch and bell housing will be installed permanently and I won't have to worry about taking them on and off. Well, the bell housing I might, but the clutch and pressure plate are gonna stay put. It's all a cruel joke, they didn't put anything in here. This looks like molly grease what it looks like. The ERP does make some really quality fasteners. I mean, it is all they do after all. Before I put any on this one, I'm gonna find out what the socket size is. Cause it's 12 point. For those of you playing at home, it's three quarter. Now, I can just look at my little dot that I made and know that this dot is at about one o'clock and I'll nail it when I put it up on there. Before you get your panties in a bunch, I'm just running them down. I'm gonna go in stages and I don't know if this is gonna stay put. I'll try to maybe hold the crankshaft while I do it. Uh, stages starting at 65 and then going to uh, 80. That's annoying. You can live over here for now. Good boy. There's a tool for this flywheel holder. Really wishing I had one at the moment. Ooh. You know what? I'm just gonna go by what ERP said. They made the fastener. They said they wanted 75. I'm gonna give them 75. This is hard. Yeah, that will end badly. Remember I told you I've been cut up by flywheels before?
it's frustrating. Ooh, I got an idea. It's one of my old bell housing fasteners. Yeah, that worked. It says remove all this stuff. Okay, make sure that the bumpy side is pointed towards you. The flat side goes towards flywheel. That's pretty funky looking. It looks like they took like cardboard and put it on there. No, it's sophisticated stuff, I'm sure. Clutch alignment tool. Okay. I hope I didn't flatten that out too much. Brass being a soft metal, it's like super easy to mushroom it out, which is what I was worried about. Now let's uh, clean our pressure plate before I install it. I didn't necessarily clean the flywheel. It was already clean before it ever got to this point. But now we definitely want to clean off the pressure plate before we install it. Oh, that's not cool. Little thing there. A little bit of damage. These are our new pressure, pressure plate bolts. They all come with washers. Yay. I'm wondering what you may be wondering. These require the same lubricant as the flywheel bolts. I don't know, but there's a little note inside. Maybe it'll tell me. And the note says, Joni loves Chachi. Doesn't really say that. Okay, fastener diameter. These are, it don't say, it just says 86 to 95, five liter. So I suppose I could measure them. I know that this torque is around 30, 35 foot pounds. So I think we're good, but there's a number we can call with additional questions. Or is that a fax? No, there's the number. <laughs> I just gave you the fax number. You're gonna to talk to a machine. Doesn't say anything about doing anything weird to these fasteners, so I'm just gonna run them in. Torque them into 35 foot pounds. No, it's not vanilla ice. Did we hit all of our alignment dolls? Yeah, looks like it. Air ratchet. Just running them down as before, I'm not torquing them. And as you're doing this, I like to wiggle the clutch and to make sure that it's centered because once these start to get run down, it's gonna draw the pressure plate up. When that happens, it's gonna put pressure on it and it's pretty much gonna live where it's gonna live. Uh, so I wanna try to make sure that it's absolutely centered so that the transmission goes in nicely. Once you pass that point where it stops moving, it's not gonna move. But I'm gonna draw it up evenly, so I'm gonna keep going around until they bottom out, and then we'll do the final fork. I think they're all bottomed out now. I'm gonna use my same makeshift flywheel holder deal and just go straight to 35. Now I'll check the uh, alignment tool a couple of times. Just to make sure that it's going in. Yeah, I guess that's bottomed out. Just worried that wasn't going into the bushing, but it is. It's a snug fit, that's for sure. But another clutch alignment tool to add to my collection. Is it just me or did that time seem to pass really quickly? 
Anyway, this concludes part one of the TKO 600 installation into the Fairmont project. Uh, if you have questions about the tools or just additional information about this transmission, also modern driveline, I'll put links in the description to that. So please check the description for links to additional information. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head over to airatthecarguy.com. Yep, that's right. Also linked in the description. Google Plus, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you wish to connect with me socially, also linked in the description. <laughs> Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.